All right, Entree Architect community, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity live conversation for Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Thanks for joining us today. As you get here, say hi, let us know that you're here, and let us know where here is for you. Where are you joining this conversation from? If we've never met before, my name is Jeff. I'm in Indianapolis, and I come here every weekday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern for one reason so that we can find clarity around the things that matter most to you, the architect. Doesn't matter if you're the employee of a firm or you own your own firm. Maybe you circled a date on the calendar. You said, hey, 2023 is my year and you're on the runway to starting your own thing. Or maybe you started your own thing a year ago or 10 years ago or 27 years ago, and you're starting to rethink or reimagine what that firm could or maybe even should be. All of the topics that we cover, one topic every day, they all fall under the broad umbrella of the business of architecture, and they're all the need-to-know topics for the success of entrepreneur architects just like you. So thanks for joining us today, as usual, for these conversations, these live conversations. I am joined by Catherine McPhail. Hi, Catherine. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for mentioning me again. See, I do feel like you mentioned me when you say the 27 years, which actually, I think today might be 27 years exactly that when I started my... My uh, All right. thing. Yeah. Well, congratulations. So, Happy anniversary. 27 years is a, is a, a big milestone. It is. It is. I, I, it, not, not, um, there are lots of mugs out there for a happy 27 years in practice. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'll, I'll go over to the, uh, the Hallmark store and I'll buy a, you know, a 25th or a 30th or whatever, and I'll just scribble it out and I'll, I'll write 27 <laughs> in it and I'll Perfect. send it to you. Thanks. I, I doubt that, I doubt they have a 27, but. Who knows? I hadn't that, thought that's about That's a big it. deal. Congratulations. Anyway, is, well, I mean, just time keeps marching on. And honestly, I know every I say this a lot, but when you say it's 2023 and maybe this is your year and you started saying 2022, I don't know. We we, we all know that. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's so been, futuristic. I'm just saying. It is. A it while. Is, it is futuristic. Yes. Say, even like saying 2023 is the year seems like the Jetsons are, ought to be uh sort of zooming around or something, but here Mm -hmm. we are. (laughs) Six months old now, I think. (laughs) Technically, George Jetson. Yeah, we we talked about that one time, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. George. Toddler George. Um, I'm looking at the comments here, and I see that the first person in the room is Christian in Ithaca, New York. He says, here. So congratulations, Christian. Welcome back. Glad you're here. You are the winner of today's John Kinney Memorial Crocheted Bathtub Award. So that's the award that we give for the first person in the room. Welcome back. Uh, Nicole, welcome from Arizona. John Jones from Connecticut. And James Petty from upstate New York. Glad all of you are with us. Jefferson is joining us from Los Angeles. Ed Shannon says hello. He's in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, let's see. Janine is checking in. She says it's sunny and 72 in Arizona. Surprising. Um, I'm just, yeah, yeah. And I'm saying it is not sunny, nor is it 72 in Indianapolis. <laughs> so enjoy that. Uh, Mark Arlo Page, welcome back. Uh, let's see. Chris is joining us from Massachusetts and Jessica Rogers from sunny South Florida. Mm. Also enjoy that. Glad you're joining us today. Uh, let's see. Coffee Sketch Podcast from Twitch, I think, is Kurt up in Flint, Michigan. Wendy mm-hmm. Brown is in Western Massachusetts. I think I've got that right. And mm-hmm. um, Yoko joining us. She says she's multitasking. She's trying to multitask. I say this every time. Say hi, even if you're just planning to listen in or if you uh, intend to multitask. But our goal, our secret goal is to make sure that you can't multitask to uh, draw you into this conversation. So, hey, give it a shot. We're glad you're here. But uh, we, we do plan to suck you into this conversation. We're glad that you're here. Um, if you are on Facebook and you're commenting away to, hey, I'm here, I'm, I'm in, in Nebraska or somewhere like that, and you wonder why your comments aren't showing up on the screen like Yoko's or James's or Wendy's, uh, it's because you are in a private Facebook group and there are rules that say that uh, your name, your likeness, your comments can't be let out of that group unless you give Facebook permission to talk with Restream, which is this platform that we use. So the key to solving all of your problems, I mean all of them, is in the lower left-hand corner of your screen right now. Open up a separate browser window, type chat.restream.io, 
slash FB, like Facebook. So that's chat.restream.io slash FB. And a couple of clicks later, you'll give Facebook permission to uh, communicate with Restream, and we'll be on our way. You, your comments will start showing up like the other uh, Facebook users that you see on the screen. But right now, we've got YouTube, we've got Twitch, we've got Facebook. Uh, I don't know if I've seen a LinkedIn yet, but uh, it's great to have everybody from all over the internet joining us here today. Um, we have kept our esteemed guest back in the green room for a while, but the good news is that the green room is fully stocked with cheese balls. I that mean, is like the good they're news. <laughs> <laughs> they are overflowing, just barrels and barrels of cheese balls. Um, so imagine. hopefully, hopefully it's okay that we've taken this long to get to our guest. <laughs> well, it's given her time to wipe off her face anyway <laughs> yeah, and hands. She's cleaning her fingers and stuff like that. <laughs> So the, the thing is, none of you can see what we can see. Um, and it's actually, it's really funny. We're, we're about to have a really good, a really fun conversation here. So let me go ahead and introduce our guest. Uh, our guest today has spent her entire career immersed in the world of designing and constructing the built environment. I'm really curious about that as a niche. So we'll probably get into that a little bit. She's an author, a board member, and a CEO. Her first book, I'm I'm saying that as a point of encouragement. I'm saying her first book mm-hmm. is Never Never Get Their Coffee, Empowering Fearless Leadership. And she's mm. the executive vice president and the CEO of the American Institute of Architects. Lakeisha Woods, welcome to Context and Clarity Live. <laughs> I to clean all the cheese balls off my finger. <laughs> In a dream world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, it every, nobody, nobody in the audience gets oh, the inside joke. Jeff. Uh oh, we can't start this yeah, early. Jeff uh, freezing. <laughs> I know. Nobody understands my guilty pleasure for uh, cheese balls. Yeah, I know cheese balls are good, but I don't <laughs> think that was going to be the most most of what we were talking about during this I, um, interview. I don't think so. So tell and me about yet, your book while while Jeff's while, while Jeff's going to come back. Correct? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, well, yes, uh, it was a, a, an interesting way for the world to align as uh, someone had reached out to me on LinkedIn when they saw the posts that I had been sharing, just a little thought leadership and asked me if I had ever thought about writing a book. And I had <laughs> thought about it and my husband had been encouraging me and I had sort of had a draft, but not anything I was ever going to take the time to publish. And when they asked for it, I went ahead and added a little more content and threw it to them. And uh, it yep, turned out that they thought this is exactly what we need. They really loved the title that I had written seven years ago in my head. And then mm-hmm. lo and behold, the book happened to come out about the same time as I was starting my new job at AIA. Uh, although oh. when I wrote the book, it had not, you no know, AIA still had another CEO and no thoughts of changing it, but mm-hmm. it all just worked out that way. So here so I am. Have you gone on tour or anything for the uh, book or uh, done any publicity? Always sounded like a really great idea. I mean, I really <laughs> yeah. wrote the book more because I kept getting questions from people uh, that mm. were, you know, steps or strategies or what would you do uh, in this circumstance? And I just kept answering the same questions. And so I thought it was best to um, just write it out so I could share it with mm. people. And, you know, so it was really just a tool for other women, because uh, often I would get questions from young women or actually very experienced women that were running into challenges and, and facing obstacles. And I wanted to, to share my story. But when it really came together was when I was able to ask other women in the community to share their own story. And that's where I really found, um, to me, it, it all came together and, and seemed so much more useful to not just hear what I experienced, but what other people experienced, and especially within their own uh, industries uh, and job Mm. responsibilities. So it was great. Is it kind of similar experiences across different industries, would you say? Well, yes. I mean, I, one of the chapters is is called, it's all about the laws. And it really is just a, a, the purpose was to list all the laws that have kept women in certain roles because, you know, so many decisions 
have kept us from being able to take leadership roles in organizations if you're expected to be home with your children. And so Mm -hmm. until you can change the laws, you will struggle to really find uh, success. And so I wanted to document those cases And one of the people who I reached out to is an attorney and one of the stories she shared. So each of the chapters closed with a story. And the story that she shared was just her experience starting at a law firm and sort of compared her, what she experienced as a first time attorney and what a gentleman in the same role and the questions Mm. that were asked of her and what was never asked of him uh, just to hear those stories, it was, oh my gosh, <laughs> like that's a, a whole other experience or, you know, a woman mm-hmm. who came up and, um, and just different, you know, different responsibilities and people that are, you know, older than I am or younger than I am and just the different um, steps that they've had to take and, and how they achieve success. Just, I mean, one woman who was coming off of maternity leave and went back to work and the questions that were asked of her and the statements that were made to her versus her husband returning to his office from being on parental leave. It was, you know, mm. he returned. It was, we're so glad to have you. We've got tons of work for you. And she came back and they're like, wow, haven't lost the baby weight. And just the ridiculous yeah. microaggressions that are, that are given yeah. and shared with women that are never even brought to hmm. end with men. Well, I don't, I don't think we were supposed to be talking about the book necessarily during this thing, but I was supposed to ask about AIA and we were thinking, well, we'll talk about, they'll get that in a second. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get back to that in a second, but what is your big, what is, well, I don't even know. I'm going to have to text him and see if he, um, I have my do not disturb on, so I'm going to turn it off so he can disturb me if he wants to. Um, so, but what is the big takeaway of the book? Do you have advice for women and how to be not asked to get coffee or take the notes or? things like that? Uh, The one thing is I'll say it's really not about coffee as much as it is about for men and women, everybody who is experiencing, uh, when you're looking at culture in your work environment, uh, things, tools and tricks and strategies for for women to succeed, uh, to maybe get out of their own way, because sometimes there are um, there are people who there's a, a chapter called Please Stop Apologizing. And yes, predominantly women more than men will unnecessarily apologize for things. So it's those things, just a reminder of things you should not do. Yeah. But also mm-hmm. I, I had so many men tell me, wow, you know what? I didn't realize I was exhibiting this behavior or I was making these statements. And you're right, it's not positive for our work environment or it is, you know, so it's more of an eye-opening mm-hmm. opportunity for everybody to take a look at, how you operate. It's about diversifying your your friend group, not just your work group, because people hire the people they know. And if everybody you know looks like you, then you're not yeah. going to have a diverse representation within your firm. Uh, so it is all of those those the strategies and steps to be more successful as a person. We're you know we fear what we don't understand. So if you true, know more true. people, you can really address all those EDI strategies um, that everybody needs as a takeaway. Mm. Well, that's very interesting. I'm going to have to read your book. To be honest, I haven't read that book yet. So, um, usually I read all the books. Sorry about that. But I've got some questions that we have. Christian, who was in the room first, you hear him from that moment of fame he had. Um, he says, I asked a few days ago with some dictionary answers, but so much overlap between the job description of CEO, president, and executive vice president. Was asking for the definition? Well, he was just just wondering, what is there much overlap between those options of uh, oh, CEO, so, president, and executive vice president? So at AIA, the president is actually the volunteer leader. So our current 2023 president of AIA is Emily Grandstaff Rice, FAIA. Mm-hmm. And so yep. she is the volunteer leader of AIA. And she's the one who leads the board uh, and is sort of the, the face of the organization, goes out and represents us. Now, I also, as the executive vice president and chief executive officer, which I'm not quite sure about. Every organization has a different name for that. Um, Mm -hmm. But really, at the end of the day, it's just the chief executive officer, which is the the paid staff leader. 
So yeah. um, my job is to run the business operation for AIA. So our volunteer okay. leader, our president and the board, they set the strategy. They put the strategic plan together. They say, this is what we need in our profession. This is what we need AIA to do to help us grow and succeed. And then it's my job to work with the staff at AIA to execute on that, to create an operational plan and to move that strategic plan forward. And so uh, one year officially on the job, that's exactly what we're doing. We, we kicked off 2023 with an operational plan that's focused on five priorities so that we can really help lead this profession uh, and continue to build upon uh, the great leadership of the past. Hmm. Oh, interesting. I, I, I'm glad Christian asked that because I was, I was wondering that myself. So you don't set policy yourself. You're the, you just the, not just, you are the business. <laughs> we take head. action on the policy that is set by our volunteer board and also the committees and councils that report up to our volunteer board. Yeah. Well, Thank now, you, yeah, that, that was yes, a great Courtney, it is a great explanation. It makes total, that makes total sense. So is this something you always wanted to do to be the, uh, the executive vice president of the AIA or. You know, what's interesting. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland, uh, their business school, and I knew I wanted to run a business one day. That That's the thing that I thought was uh, going to be my goal. Probably mm. thought I was going to run, you know, Coca-Cola, but <laughs> I went the nonprofit side instead. Of course, much better. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but my first job, as Jeff had originally started saying, was working for the National Ready Mix Concrete Association. And mm. really, when I took that job, it was because the, the person that I interviewed with before I got home already had an offer letter and benefits package sitting on my doorstep. And I was so Whoa. impressed with the yeah. speed at which they gave me an offer. I was like, I don't know, NRMCA, who, who knows, but I'll just <laughs> check it out. And wow. uh, fast forward all these years, I'm still in this space. And I will mm. say, I'll thank the Ready Mix Concrete folks because they were so passionate about concrete and people understanding <laughs> that there's a difference between cement and concrete. And they had me drinking the Kool-Aid. And so now <laughs> I scream on TV too uh, when <laughs> pastors yeah. say a uh, cement bridge. And I'm like, it's concrete. Yeah, yeah but, they get um, it wrong all the time. They say it wrong all the time and it drives me crazy. But it, you know, that's what got me in. And so then from there, I went to work for the, uh, for AGC of America and then to the National Association of Home Builders. And uh, then I had the opportunity to be the CEO for the National Institute of Building Sciences, and that I worked with AIA all the time. So um, it just sort of a, a happenstance that here I am at AIA, but I've always had a love and appreciation for architecture. I remember when I first started in associations that I said, boy, one day I hope I can work for AIA. And I just never dreamed I'd be able to lead it one day. And so here I am and I'm thrilled and yeah. just focused on not wanting to let down our members. And so I want to make sure that we are pushing them forward, that we are providing uh, avenues for them to, to get a higher wage for the work that they do, for people to understand and value what architects do, what they represent, how they're impacting their community, uh, to focus on that business background that I have and helping uh, provide resources and making sure that our organization is providing tools uh, to architects so that they can grow their business uh, and become more successful. And of course, to just elevate uh, the profession in any way that our team can. So we are, we are focused on that and driving value. And uh, I mean, the big win for me last year was I was so thrilled when we were able to work with uh, a company that is producing the TV show, uh, America by Design Architecture, because mm. one of the takeaways from members was that they wanted the general public to understand uh, what we do or to value architecture or to at least see it and understand it. And I think they did a pretty good job of just putting together a show that showcases some of the, you know, some great projects and, and speaking with architects. And it really helps that all the projects that they highlighted and all the architects they spoke to were AIA members. So that's mm -hmm. a big win. Yep. Uh, we were able to get them to sign a contract to say they will only highlight AIA members in their projects. Oh. So well, um, I, for me, I'm really happy we get a TV show uh, without having <laughs> to use our, our members' dues dollars to pay for it. So yeah, better. yeah that's pretty good. The best I haven't seen ever. that show. I haven't seen <laughs> that show. What's it? It's called America. You can 
segment on uh, CBS networks. Paramount America Plus. By design? America by Design Architecture. Architecture. All right. On CBS. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. and this in February, it'll be in six major markets, but you can also just watch it on YouTube or stream it online. Oh, cool. Well, I definitely will. I'm always looking for good shows. I love those design shows. I mean, they're just kind of fun to watch. They're so over the top, a lot of these, a lot of the projects. Definitely not what I normally do day to day. So it's nice to watch it even as an architect. But so we have a couple questions, and I don't know if you just answered this um, completely, but what are new initiatives that the AIA is taking action on? Well, I will talk about those five priorities because uh, one of the things is I, I went on a listening tour in my first year, as you, I think, always should, is listen mm-hmm. to what members say they need or where are the pain points, what are the things that we are really good at and what should we not do. And um, the number one thing they asked us to do was fix our website. <laughs> so that is one of the priorities this year is updating AIA.org so that it is Uh, the most effective tool for our members so they can access what they need when they need it. Uh, Another item that we're focused on is our show. Uh, A23, Mm. we want people to come to San Francisco and really be excited. Uh, And they know that um, that we we bring a lot of people together. I think in in Chicago this past year, we had almost Mm. 12,000 people. Uh, But to me, it's how do we get more uh, more of our members, honestly, to attend? And how do we create more value so that this is the must-attend event of the year? So mm. uh, that's something that we're focused on. We also heard that you know we need to make the AIAU platform, our ed- online education, uh, AIAU. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's, it is where people go to get that continuing education uh, online. And they want us to make sure that we have more resources? Uh, do we have the right content? You know, right now we have 30,000 courses, but you have to sign up for them one at a time. And so oh. if you're a firm and you want to get a license for everybody on your uh, staff team to be able to access it, you know, those mm-hmm. are resources that we need to develop. And so that's something that we're also focused on. And in addition, we have our, our CES program, which is a education that is put on by other companies or firms. You know, again, if you're focused on learning all the materials that exist, et cetera, those firms want to teach you about their product. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we have the right companies, the right information that is a part of that CES program. So again, we're always focused on what's the best, what is the, what are the best resources that we can provide to our members? And last but not least, we are focused on member and volunteer engagement. Uh, People told me, you know, the good news about AIA is that there are well, at the time, like 94,000 passionate members. And they're like, the bad news is there are 94,000 passionate <laughs> members. And there's That's people that are all ready to just help you. And then there's so many people that are trying to do your job. So we want to yeah. make sure that we harness the power and all that amazing knowledge that our members have and just focus them on how to get involved, uh, micro-volunteering. It's all the different ways <laughs> people can you know, what we can do to create opportunities for engagement, but not take so much time away from them that they are literally almost taking on another job so that they can be involved with AIA. Because someone said, oh, well, I have to spend like 30 hours a week on AIA. Like, we are, yeah. that's bad for a brand. Don't tell us that. We have got to focus so that what you're doing, what you're contributing is not taking that much of your time, but also that you feel fulfilled with the time that you did give to us because it is yeah. a volunteer opportunity and we need to mm. to appreciate the time that you give to us and, and make you feel good about the work that you've done. So we're looking mm. at all those pieces and making sure we put all the information out there in an easy to find manner, working with our local and state components to ensure that they have the tools and the training for them to also execute at that local level with their own volunteers. So we know that most mm-hmm. volunteers that get to national started at the local level. And so mm-hmm. we want to make sure that everybody has the right assets in, in hand. I like that micro volunteering. It seems a lot more um, doable. You know, if someone asked me for, a, you, we have this micro volunteer position. Would you be interested? I'd be more interested than listening to a long, you know, anyways, great, great name for it. So <clears throat> um, you probably aren't going to be able to answer this question, but the burning question is, where is the uh, convention going to be next year? 
Oh, of course I can answer that question. This oh, okay. year, first of all, I have to talk about this year. So okay. this year, A23 is in San Francisco, June 7th through the 10th. Mark your calendars. Ooh. Registration okay. opens March 1st. So get ready, sign up. Oh, it's going to be wow. great. And then next year, it will conveniently be located in Washington, D.C. So 2024 is in Washington, D.C., which, of course, is where AIA is located. But as you may know, we're in we're preparing, we're starting a building renewal. And Mm. I just wish it was going to be done (laughs) by 2024 since the show will be there. But uh, we're going to try to line up some tours so people can wander through the construction or reconstruction of our building. So. Uh, great things that, that will also great. happen in D.C. And D.C. will also be the first show that we really, truly control ourselves and can put everything together because uh, we were able to work with Informa, who's the company who used to manage our exhibit. And they were kind enough to allow us the opportunity to manage that on our own again. Because, uh, again, a lot of the feedback I received from our members was the price of our uh, show and, and the cost to get there and some of those things, the only way to, to make adjustments is to be able to to manage all those parts of the show where revenue comes from so that mm. we can find ways to maybe lower the cost for our attendees and, and make sure that our attendees are going to say hello and spend time with our exhibitors and sponsors because those are the people who help offset those costs. Yeah. You'd mentioned earlier that you uh, were hoping to have more than 12,000 people at the convention. How many are you envisioning? What is the What would be a great outcome. I mean, at some point it's too many people, but uh, what's the perfect amount? <laughs> 20, so, I'm five so I know yeah, the largest so show they've ever had is 26,000. So of course I have to beat oh, that. Uh, but next this year in San Francisco, I think our goal is probably closer to 16,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've got to, we have to have the capacity uh, to, yeah. to cre- increase the size of the show. So I won't scare my team by saying too big of a number. <laughs> 30,000. <000. laughs> yes, no. of course. Ideally, I would like to get to a much larger show, but we're also trying to make it a show within a show. So we want you to find your own community within mm. the show. So finding places where people, you know, if you are, even if you're a, um, if you focus on on homes and residential. So you can go and connect with other residential architects and then also making it not just about architecture because architects are only successful if we have all the other players at the table and working together and collaborating successfully. So we wanna find ways to bring all of the stakeholders together and really share examples of success. That's one of the, the keynote panels we're working on now is talking about successful collaboration between the architect, the owner, the contractor, the developer, the engineer. You know, How are we working together well and how can we learn from other people's success stories? Because we can yeah. always talk about what doesn't work, but let's right. focus on what does and how we can duplicate mm. those success stories. Yeah, that's great. So would that be part of the, edu- would that be part of the uh, AIAU? That's right. Well, I actually, got that right, that, right. Well, there'll be a combination, right? We're going to kick it off with a, a keynote panel at A23, but then mm-hmm. we also, of course, are going to try to change and modify some of the education that's available through AIAU, which of course is online learning. You can get all the time. So, um, we want to make sure that we're providing everybody the, the tools that they need. Okay. So Jeff had asked a question here. He says, a question that is often asked in this community is how do small firm architects and sole practitioners benefit from AIA membership? So I think you started to touch on that, but do you have any ideas as far as that oh. goes? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, again, AIA... One of the things I I found interesting as I was on my listening tour last year is small firms often thought that AIA was really focused on the large firms. And the large firms said, well, we know AIA is really focused on the small firms. Oh, I see. So everybody thinks we're representing the other group. Uh, (laughs) For me, I think as an organization, we must provide tools and resources for all, uh, all sizes of firms, whether you are a, a, a one person operation or you're a medium-sized firm, small firm, large firm, we have tools and resources for all. And uh, there are every, I mean, every kind of tool you can imagine, we have it. But that's also why one of our top priorities is updating our website, because uh, there's so much information that sometimes it's hard to find. And True. so we need to be able to streamline that information so that we are, you know, of course, technology is your friend. We need to make it our friend by utilizing the power of AI to give you what you need when you need mm. it. 
that's mm. what our team is focused on. It doesn't happen overnight. So we appreciate your patience as we build those, those resources out. But uh, we have the information. And we also, you know, we have a, a, a member services team. You can actually call and they will answer the phone and talk to you and help you find resources if you can't find them on your own. Oh, I did not know that. That's good to know. Well, we could put their phone number up here um, later, but we had, I, I can't remember her name right now. We had, the, we had, we had some, uh, several people from the AIA on here and uh, too bad I didn't write them out. And they, um, we were surprised at all the resources that we could actually get online. So I think maybe we have a tendency to complain about things when we don't actually look into whether they exist. So I'm just going to admit that. And it is That's interesting to know as well, though, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, now we know we should go explore this very full website because it does sound like it has a ton of information. And I'm also somewhat comforted to hear that it's more of like a sibling thing where you think both siblings think the other one has more attention from the parents. You're the so. favorite kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it turns out we are the favorite kid. So that's good. That's you're, good news. All, I, there are no favorites. There, you're all no, my I favorite. I, sure? I love every member equally. Equally. Yes. So, and that's why we're also focused on making sure our members, like that we increase that value. That value proposition is so important. One, that you mm -hmm. see the value from what we're providing. But two, that we are focused on getting owners and developers to see the value in paying the right fee for mm -hmm. the services that our members provide. Uh, yeah. And that is something that I just cannot stress enough. And we will just keep, um, How are keep you gonna, at it. Because the, how are you going to do more, that? Well, it really, part of it is just having the conversations. Uh, you know, there are so many, so many companies that I've met with that it's almost like this eye-opening, I had no idea. Oh, I thought the architect made all the money. Like, no, architects taking all the risk. <laughs> and they're the ones that often sometimes are not making uh, the fee that they should, especially for the amount of work and time that is put in. So yeah. we need to take away any barriers that are keeping people from uh, generating the income that they should. And there's nothing wrong with saying that our members should be profitable. We want them to be profitable. The mm. more that you can do that, the more you can invest in that mission that you are all focused on, which is changing the world. But you can't change the world if your doors are shut. So we've got to keep your business open so that you can continue to impact your, your communities in a positive way. All right. Well, uh, I actually personally am not an AIA member right now. I was before, and then I've just let it lapse for years. I know, I'm sorry. But I might, you know, Lakeisha, I, I think I will join again because I want to be one of those 16,000 people at your next convention. So oh, thank every, you. Every person counts. Well, I mean, I keep meaning to join, but then it's kind of expensive, you know? So then I think, well, what's if? And I, I feel like I need to volunteer to get the most out of it. And then I don't, you know, so. Guess what? Now that I know... There's Remember micro that volunteer volunteer engagement button. We're looking at dues as well. Oh, really? Well, that's good because yeah. it's it is a lot for the local and the and state and the and, and the yeah and then the national. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just a big yeah. investment. And then I and ended it up joining. On where you are? Yeah, in Massachusetts. I'm in Massachusetts, and it's yeah. you know, pretty pretty expensive. But we also want you to get your dues invoice. To me, we've done our job when the invoice comes electronically, I pray it's not still in the mail. And you say, best money I ever spent. Right. If that's that what would you're be saying, nice. we're doing our job. And if that's not what you're saying, if you're saying this is too expensive, then we still have work to do. So All right. again, we appreciate uh, your patience as we earn your business back. Well, yeah, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to say that I don't, it's just my own personal financial thing that hasn't hasn't worked out for me. But um, someone asked here a question about whether or not you collaborate with other, uh, I think it was Christian, and he was asking about other collaboration with other groups. Oh, yeah. A Does the AIA cooperate with ALA and SARA? I don't even know what SARA is. Society of I don't actually know. Christian, can you tell me what that is? Or are they the competition? So <laughs> Yeah, how does that how does that all work? So what I will tell you is that we or we, my team, we work with a variety of organizations across the spectrum. Uh, for me, I think everybody plays a certain role, and so uh, I have again, I'm one year in, so I haven't met everybody, but yeah. I already came in with certain relationships, right? I, I have a CEO group, and it's all the uh, 
most of the major built environment related associations, ASHRAE, ICC, BOMA, um, of course, NIBS is still in, it was still work with them. Uh, but then there's also everybody from um, the landscape architects, the interior designers, you know, we're talking to everybody to see how we can work together. Because uh, last I checked, if someone has to complete a project, it requires all of them, right? I know Tom Smith from Civil Engineers. Like we talk to, I talk to my my CEO peers in all the various organizations because we learn from each other and we yep. look at ways we can help influence the built environment as a whole. And so I don't look at things from a competitor perspective. Now, I don't know all of these. I haven't met people from every one of these organizations that people are listing. But again, that's the goal. The goal is just to work together and we all have a different role to play. Sure. Yeah. I don't I think they're just telling me that SARA is a Society of American Registered Architects. Mm-hmm. which they have not been doing much of them. At least they have not been reaching out to me to ask me to join. So that's the good news. Whereas AIA does all the time. So, but, <laughs> uh, and I get a cool pin and I, I like the, you know, the pin that comes with things. So I like that. I don't know if you still give out that pin. I had a pin originally. So um, yeah, well, you know, I know that you are at a board meeting right now. So how many boards came or is that because of your job or is it like a, it goes with your job or is it kind of coincidental? No, there was a board meeting earlier this week. That's because of my job. This is a board I was appointed to. It's the University of Maryland uh, Board of Visitors for the Architecture School. So okay. yes, that was a my first board meeting today. So I'm here at a Baltimore architecture firm, Ayers St. Rose, and they're mm. right here on the water in Baltimore. It's beautiful. So they nice. gave me an office to have this meeting and they are all at happy hour. <laughs> Yeah, they're so, at happy hour. I know you'd uh, mentioned yes, that. Yes, I said, no, no, no. I want to come talk to Jeff. And then Jeff Yes, and Jeff isn't even here. I know. I know. Well, is there anything <laughs> else that you wanted to tell? things work, right? Technology is always going to throw you uh, a loop yep. and they want to keep you on your toes. But I'm so happy that you, you and I got to stay on and talk. Yeah, no, I am too. Was there any, anything else you wanted to cover with, you wanted to make sure that you brought up with, with Jeff, but now me? <laughs> to be honest, I was on. so waiting for the questions to fly. I didn't, uh, there wasn't uh, an agenda. So I was there just was an agenda, yeah. I mean, questions. I didn't see any agenda either. We were... Anyone had, but uh, again, I hope that we can talk about it face to face at mm-hmm. uh, A23 at the latest, right? In San Francisco, June 7th through the 10th. I think I saw in the the chain on the right that somebody's going to be at leadership summit next week. So we'll see you Mm -hmm. there. I look forward to meeting. Uh, We have a group of our members, I think over over 500 uh, members will be coming together in Washington, DC next week for our leadership summit, where we train our local state uh, and national leadership on all the benefits of getting involved and the role of volunteer leadership versus staff leadership and governance. And we're going up for our Hill Day to advocate uh, on behalf of uh, architects because mm. it is so important. Um, I mean, with, it, it's sort of interesting. I know that people, I've heard people say like, we shouldn't get involved in advocacy. And of course I spent 13 years at the National Association of Home Builders and there was a lot of focus on advocacy. But then I also spent a lot of time on calls at the beginning of my time here at AIA where architects said they they would like, well, we're not going to win that battle because the home builders, you know, feel opposite. Well, to me, you've got a better mission. And so we've got to get up on the hill and tell people why, what mm. you're trying to do, our mission around sustainability and the, the yeah. we need, we need the people on the hill. We need them to, uh, Congress to understand what you're doing and how you're impacting your community. It is so yeah. important to tell your story because if we're not there telling it, somebody else is telling theirs and getting their message through. So yeah, I am so sure. thrilled that so many members are coming together for Hill Day and are going to be a part of this leadership summit. So thank you for those of you who will be there d- for doing your time and um, and being a part of this. So John says, um, yeah, that's great. I think it was Wendy who said she was going down there. So uh, John says, Lakeisha, you've taken some tough questions. Actually, I don't, Okay. Thank you. I mean, some of them were tough. I don't know. I don't think they got bad. Um, what's an initiative that you're personally excited about? I mean, it sounds like oh, you're personally excited about, you know, being, going to Congress and talking about AIA. 
Sure. I, I think I'm just most excited about continuing to celebrate our members. Uh, I know mm. that uh, one of the initiatives we started this year on social is our program called uh, Future Forward, and it's highlighting women, minority architects, or architecture firm leaders that are doing a great job of elevate, elevating uh, women and minorities into leadership. Uh, that is one of the, of course, the, the data doesn't lie, right? That, that our numbers are uh, in need of improvement. And so one of the things I've heard when I talk to students is that they want to see architects that look like them. And so mm -hmm. we've got, you know, a program in place to tell those stories and share examples of, of great projects that they've been a part of, not just what struggle someone has gone yeah. through to get where they are, but why right. they like what they're doing, why they love yeah. the impact they're making in their community. And we also need to celebrate, again, those firm leaders that are elevating women and minorities into leadership roles uh, because it's leadership. It's about that, uh, that piece of it that's so important. And I think we should celebrate those that are really making a concerted effort uh, because, again, Definitely. I'll say a hundred times over, the data doesn't lie. A company that has a more diverse leadership team is more innovative and more financially successful. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to see coming out of our firms, more financial success, more innovation. And that way you're going to grow and flourish. And when you grow, we grow. So we're in this together. If our yeah. firms don't do well, AIA, you know, it may be 166 years, but I, I'd like it to keep going. And that right. requires all of our members to, to be successful. That's great. I mean, I'm excited just listening to you talk about that because you're right. I mean, that that our success is your success and yours is ours, you know. So um, I know that you were uh, going to be missing the happy hour and you don't. <laughs> I could let you go. We could we could wrap this up early today if you like. No, and, no uh, problem. I know. I know you weren't expecting to keep running this. And I, I, I loved how yeah. we uh, went off. We did not listen to what Jeff said and kept the con content going, even though he was no longer there. So is that what he said we were supposed to do? Not if his power went out, we should go. Yes. I, oh, see, I guess I wasn't <laughs> we, listening. We are women in leadership and we could just take charge and keep going because we've got Honestly, people here that have some questions they'd like to have answered. So right. I wonder, as yeah. everyone's saying, great job, Catherine. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, thank you for coming on because I, it's just an honor to have you here and thank you for taking the time to, uh, to be with us. So it was great to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah. I hope to see you and our membership numbers moving forward. We did, by you the will. way, exceed 96,000 members, which is the highest membership uh, in the wow. history of AIA. So that was how wow. our team closed the year. So our mark, our membership team, our marketing, our teams are just, they're doing everything they can to just keep things moving forward. And I'm really proud of the team I've got. Awesome. Actually, Yoko has one more question. What's the most difficult or challenging part of your job? Do you Ooh, want to say that? Let's see. I, well, I think the most challenging part of my job will be showing the ability for owners and developers to want to pay our members more, right? That value yeah. that they see that nobody questions what you seem to have to pay an attorney, but then people say, you know, but architects talk about how people question their fees all the time. And I'm not mm. talking about what their fees are. I don't know what they are. All I know is that it has to be valued more. If we're going to recruit people into this space, we should be just as valuable, if not more valuable than tech jobs. So what yeah. are we doing to fix that? And mm. I know it won't be solved overnight, but I do appreciate your patience as we look at all the opportunities to drive that value and push that message out to the decision makers. And that's where I'm focused. Right. And I don't know how these things work. Is, is your job like a, it's not an elected position, obviously. So is there a time limit on it or do you get to stay around for 30 years and fix uh, everything? No, I've us? got a contract. So oh. um, I have a certain number of years and then the board can decide if they want to renew that contract or not. But right now I'm focused on getting as many successful uh, initiatives accomplished in my current contract year. Cause I, I know that there are things we can, we can move forward and it, it doesn't yeah. matter what that timeline is. I definitely think you can. So good job. Thank you so much for, for fighting for us. I appreciate that. Yeah. We all appreciate that. And thanks for coming on. And um, I, I guess I'm going to get in trouble. I didn't realize I was supposed to not uh, <laughs> no, talk to you, but I'm glad all. I did. 
No, this is great. Well, thank you. And I'm going to go hang out with some architects. (laughs) Yeah, go enjoy yourself. Yes. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. everyone. See you later. Bye.